speaking Spanish fluently, I presume. I did. That was my first language. Okay. And and you also emphasize now in the History Museum where you're director, just to remind people, you uh, you also do a lot of Spanish things there as well. You have We do. We do. We, tr we try to serve uh, the community and try to get people a little interested. And sometimes uh, people here still uh, uh, speak Spanish uh, dominantly in their homes, so it's important to get them interested. And sometimes if you reach people from a personal level, they're more likely to. And you, in. you also want to tell stories of people who were in this group in South El Paso. Is that kind of how you look at yes, it? Yes, I want to talk a little bit about um, basically uh, those precursors and those precursors for that civil rights movement happening in the 50s with the arrival of Father Rum, who I find a very interesting person, and some and some of his uh, social workers. Spelled R-A-H-M, if people don't know mm -hmm. how, to, how that's spelled. R-A-H-M. Is was, that German, or where did, he, where did he come from? I assume it's he's a Jesuit priest. He came from East Texas. I mean, he wasn't Mexican. No, he was yeah. not. Okay, so he showed up. He probably had no idea what El Paso was all about. Shows up with his suitcases in 1953 to this dusty town, and he um, he's he settled into his parish, Sacred Heart, and he goes about thinking, well, okay, I see, I see what I have cut out for me. We have uh, a lot of youth gang violence. We have oh. poverty. We have uh, households in distress. We have lack of um, resources for health. And so he went about in his way trying to uh, foment uh, more positive uh, channels for youth. Oh, the, the, the church was kind of like the center of that area, was it not? It was. And previous to that and, uh, was uh, the Methodist church in El Paso in terms of what they were offering. At, they would offer, for example, we have what we just talked about, New York Methodist right. um, Maternity Ward, where I was born. Then they had Housing Community Center, because we can't leave them out. They're part and parcel of uh, Segundo Barrio history. And uh, I think we have a picture of that uh, Housing Center. And and do you, uh, do you know offhand, I don't know who, who was Housing. It was so, a person? Yeah, so... So uh, Rose Gregory Hauschen, uh Settlement House was established here in 1912 and was a product of kind of the, of the progressive era movement that swept through the U.S. and, and through from between, like, I would say maybe the 1890s to the 1920s. And women who were interested in doing good works in uh, poor neighborhoods. And so they'd go in and they'd help establish uh, these maternity centers, then they'd bring in a doctor. They'd also establish daycares. And of course, there was a Bible school and uh, recreation. Is that like made, one of the major areas that had, actually had medical services down there? Yes, actually. It served many, many women for many decades. But also kids and, and men. children, yes. <laughs> just a general clinic, yeah. And and so that was a really important hub for the community, especially in terms of access to health care. Oh, I bet. We're going to take a break here at this point in El Paso History Radio Show. Melissa, well, you got that phone number. We can we can take a call or two if you have yeah. a story Give us about a South call. El Paso, about, about how you're growing up there. Yeah. Call us at 915-544-5876 or 915-544-KTSM. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, Invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Mike Baca, 915-592-4549. 915 915-592-4549. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. The start of a brand new year 
is a great time to make changes and improvements. So if you have cracked teeth, missing teeth, or loose, old, wobbly dentures, get a beautiful new smile at 1995implants.com, the El Paso dental office where implants are very affordable, as low as $1,995 per tooth, including the implant, abutment, and crown. Other places charge three, four, five, six thousand dollars an implant. But at 1995implants.com, you're going to save a lot of money on dental implants that are top quality and long lasting. Plus, we offer a free consultation with the dentist, free standard x rays, and convenient financing plans that fit your budget. Make this new year your best year ever with 1995implants.com. For more information, please see our website. 1995implants.com. That's 1995implants.com. Sabla Espanol. First, we decide where we want to go. Then we need to know the best way to get there. Hi, my name is Adam Barada. I'm the owner of Advantage Gold. We're the highest rated precious metals firm in the country. We teach people how to own physical gold and silver. Now, we've won the Best of TrustLink Award four years in a row because we educate our clients on how to buy gold and silver the right way. We don't pay celebrity spokespeople millions of dollars. We'd rather pass that value on to you. Call 800-900-8000 and speak with one of our experts. We'll send you a free gold kit along with my latest number one national best-selling book, The Great Devaluation. Call 800-900-8000. That's 800-900-8000. Get the best information, the best process, the best service, the best value. Call Advantage Gold at 800-900-8000. Call 800-900-8000. You can't help but look at a car wreck on the side of the road. Yet we turn a blind eye to the things we should be looking at. What are we doing? It's not like we didn't know. We know. We are turning our eyes. The Glenn Beck Program. I have no tolerance anymore for people who say, I just can't look at it. Listen and look. You don't have that option. Glenn Beck. Mornings at 7. What can you do? Here's something you can do. News Radio 690 KTSM. News Radio 690 KTSM El Paso. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. And I understand we're up on Facebook, have been for almost the beginning, yeah. so there's that. Uh, we're also the History Radio Show there on Facebook. Go there, take a look at it, El Paso History Radio Show. And uh, we have a TV channel as well on YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV, where we're archiving a number of things, all oh, about a dozen of the El Paso Gold DVDs are produced. They look like old news now because, I mean, we, I didn't have production values like they you can oh, do like today. Can you imagine? All but, those cameras around. Uh, but I did what I could for uh, in the early 1920. Uh, 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 early, 1900s? Well, I started back then, but in the early 2000s. Yeah. And anyway, we also have a, a list of ABC7 series we did for uh, uh, for them in their news show. I don't know, Eric, have you ever seen some of those? But it's uh, it's a cowboy named Bertie walking around El Paso looking and explaining a number of things. I think I've seen him a couple of times. And it's kind of like a compilation of what we could do in about, I think it was 20 different pieces of history. Mm -hmm. And we put those out there and uh, we do what we can with all that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, that's on there, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. We get a lot of comments on there sometimes. So what do you got? Well, we need a drum roll, but uh, I don't know if we have one. But <laughs> Oh, here you go. You ready? There we go. Do our fingers. That's yes. right. You have a big announcement. That's right. El Paso scores big with the editors of the most respected Old West History genre magazine, and that's True West Magazine. It has more than 100,000 readers worldwide. Six Guns and Shady Ladies and Concordia Cemetery were selected Editor's Choice 2022 of Best of the West. Uh, Six Guns got it for the Old West Reenactment Group, the best. 
and the best historic cemetery of the West was Concordia Cemetery. So, you know, hey, hey good for you. all the good work and hard work. That all well, you've done that do. before. That's a, a continuing <laughs> award you get, keep getting. They like us. They do. <laughs> well, we're probably one of the, a lot of the groups are disappearing in the reenactments, but we've been one of the longest established ones for that's still active. So that's, that's part of our history. That's that that's not so totally, totally featured in in the uh, history museum, but it is mentioned, right? A little. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? On what? The gunfighter history. Uh well, we have we have featured it at times. We did have it up for a while and then we have changed it, but I think it's important to share everything. So, I I am a big proponent of pop-up uh exhibitions and events and i think that those are the most um rewarding to the public and also to the people uh you know providing that service so i think that it has a place more in like let's share it like in a story in a virtual setting let's share it as an as a pop-up exhibition so we do have a lot of things and we did share them for a long long time and we haven't as of late, but that doesn't mean we can't in the future. Yeah, because it was a really pivotal time in the community of El Paso, whether it be looking at it being good or bad. A lot of good things came out of that Wild West period. I mean, we were, like I said, we were the little Monte Carlo, the the wildest, you know, six-gun city, which a lot of people go, oh, that's horrible. But when you look at what came after that, when when the people started to move here as the trains came in, it settled it down. But a lot of good people came out of there, good sheriffs, good uh, lawmakers judges and a lot of things came out of that you may highlight it in the future yeah right now I you're kind of so. like not there uh i'm not quite there because i'm right over here but yes <laughs> okay. i hear you i hear you fair enough whatever it, it's uh, as the director of the history museum you can sort of pick pick the focus on what you're doing and where you're going can you not in a sense uh but equitably we try to uh share as much as we can and what we did right now is we changed the direction from uh, from uh, sharing things that people had shared for years and years. And now we're sharing these other micro histories that we feel are really important because they have not necessarily had their moment in time yet. We got one on the phone here. He wants to share a micro history. His name is Ramon. Ramon, good morning. You're on the radio. Uh, yes, sir. How you doing? Good, good morning. We're good. What's up? Well, just to your radio, I always enjoy listening to you guys. And uh, just to let you know that I was born and raised in South El Paso. Oh, cool. Tell us your story. Uh, in 1949, I was born at 605 and a half South Mesa at the same house I probably was conceived in, in the same house I was born in. <laughs> uh, we were there until 1960. I went to uh, Sacred Heart Private Catholic School there with the nuns from Laredo. I was uh, baptized, confirmed as First Holy Communion at Sacred Heart. Uh, actually, the apartment's just across the uh, the alley from uh, the, the church there. So, what are your thoughts and, about having grown up there? Did you get a you get a good sense of El Paso, or what are you what are you thinking? Well, see, back then we didn't know too much about what's going on outside the, the neighborhood there, you know. But the nuns were very uh, they were trying to educate us on things that we did not actually experience in there. So they figured when we grew up, we're going to be moving out of the neighborhood. So they did introduce us to a uh, choir, uh, to square dancing, <laughs> to uh, mm-hmm. uh, all the you know, other things that we didn't experience there. They were real good uh, to us. They, they realized that we had to be educated. Just would you would you say you had a good background uh, in in El Paso, or what are you thinking? Well, you know, El Paso at that time was divided because we live in south. We live south of Paisano Street. So everybody south of Paisano Street mostly they just spoke Spanish, but once we moved north, everybody spoke English there. So would, they're different there. Where'd you move to? We moved to uh, Arizona Street, nineteen twenty-seven Arizona Street. Uh-huh. Uh, we're there until my mom just died around six years ago. She was ninety-eight years old when she passed away. So I presume you went to El Paso High School. Ah, uh, yes, El Paso High School. And I was supposed to go to Cathedral like my brothers, but I told my mom I had enough from the nuns. <laughs> <and> <laughs> I went to- Enough is but, enough. Uh, I graduated from a uh, uh, high school, a high school in 1968, and then 69. I joined the Air Force, where I retired 20 years later. Okay, so you've, I guess you you learned quite a bit in the Air Force. I'm guessing. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Okay. I was a firefighter for the Air Force. I was stationed in Maryland, 
uh, for seven years. So we provided fire protection for the president of the United States. Fair enough. Well, I appreciate your call. Thank you for sharing your story. Uh, no problem. It was a good time in El Paso. We didn't know we were poor because we're all happy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, that was a relative thing at that point. And my parents said, just because we're poor doesn't mean you have to be dirty. So we had a clean house. That's sure. Right. Sure. So again, thank you for your show. I really enjoy him. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Care. Time, talk about Mr. Lama, Tony Lama. My dad worked for him for 52 years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of boots there. Boots on the oh, ground, yeah. literally. Happy right. New Year and then keep it up. Thanks thank a lot. You. you take it easy. Thanks a lot. You, thanks for calling. So you, you, what do you think of that? I mean, that's a, that's a pretty typical story. Yeah, it is. Uh, I love to hear stories like that because that's what happens so often, right? Uh, people uh, started uh, their childhood in Segundo Barrio, and then from there they migrated to another part of um, the city. In some cases, like with the Chamisal Treaty, people were displaced and they uh, it it did, in, in fact, affect and break up the community, as it were. And so people were resettled in other places. And it was a little bit of a culture shock uh, reading some of the oral histories from uh, uh, elders who were uh, young at that time. It was a bit of a culture shock because they'd moved to, I don't know, maybe like the Austin area or Tweezletta or... Very different. And it was very different because then you felt like, well, I'm I'm recent to uh to america and i'm i'm mexican but these are the mexican americans and they don't like us to speak spanish and we barely speak english and so it was kind of a difficult uh transition for many but uh yeah it's not an unusual story in fact uh my family moved out of segundo barrio and uh moved close to where the old museum of art was off of Wyoming. Oh yes, uh, so, or uh, Wyoming, or was that would be uh, well, Rail Street? And my, uh, uh, my family, my my family home is off of Wyoming and uh, Newman, and of course uh, the old Museum of Art, the Turney Home, is on Montana. Brown Street, Montana, Montana, yeah, Brown. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Well, uh, we got Erica Marin here. She's the director of the El Paso Museum of History. We'll come back after this break and talk to you further about how you got here because you have an interesting past that we haven't quite heard at all. And then we'll get back into some of the South El Paso stories. Absolutely. All right. Back in a moment. What's that? Uh, and Facebook, they can call us or look at Facebook. Really, you can look on Facebook, which we're the El Paso History Radio Show Facebook page. You can make comments and check out, see what everybody else is saying. Fair enough. See you after this break. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. If you're with Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, you're paying too much for your wireless service. Because Pure Talk gives you the exact same 5G coverage as one of those big carriers on the exact same network, but saves the average family over $800 a year. And Pure Talk doesn't lock you into an overpriced, unlimited data contract. Why pay for data you don't need? Instead, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data for just $30 a month. And switching is so easy. You can keep your phone and keep your number or get huge discounts on the latest iPhones and Androids. So what are you waiting for? Start saving today. From your cell phone, dial pound 250 and say, switch now, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. That's pound 250, say, switch now. You'll have the option to receive a one-time auto dial text message from Pure Talk. Pure Talk is simply smarter wireless iHeartRadio Earth knows small changes make a big difference for the environment 
Did you know that keeping your tires even a single PSI lower than recommended means worse mileage and more trips to the pump? So do the environment and your wallet a favor and always check the tire pressure. Brought to you by iHeartRadio Earth and the National Environmental Education Foundation. To find more tips on smarter, sustainable living or to take action in your own community, go to iHeartRadio.com slash earth. We've lost so many people to COVID. So many moms and dads, favorite uncles, older sisters, and best friends. But vaccines can help prevent severe illness and death from COVID. So now, almost all COVID deaths are preventable. And so are the broken hearts they leave behind. We can do this. Find vaccines near you at vaccines.gov. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Every small business owner's most important New Year's resolution is to attract more customers. Let a radio ad from iHeart Ad Builder reach the customers that will make 2022 a successful year. iHeartAdBuilder.com is the fast, affordable way to create a customized ad for your business. Just answer a few questions and get your commercial on the air. Start 2022 off right and put the power of radio to work for your business at iHeartAdBuilder.com. Wesley had IRS troubles. They told me I owed them $43,000. It got really bad. Coming after my house, my car, I seriously thought that I was going to lose everything. Wesley called Optima Tax Relief. Oh, they were great people. Optima Tax, they know what they're doing. Optima Tax Relief came through with flying colors. I saved an incredible amount of money. Call Optima Tax Relief. Don't trust anybody else. Call Optima for a free consultation. Call 800-783-8055. 800-783-8055. Optima Tax Relief. For details, visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. If your New Year's resolution includes getting into shape, make step one downloading the free iHeartRadio app. Whether your goal is balancing mind and body or ramping up the intensity to beast mode, we've got the music to get you moving and keep you motivated with dozens of specially curated workout playlists from rock pump up to yoga music. Just put your headphones on and tap playlists to get started on reaching your goals. iHeart. Discover music, radio, and podcasts you'll love. iHeartRadio. El Paso's News Radio, 690 KTSM. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. We are back here and uh, I want you to check out Celebration of Our Mountains.org. Uh, tomorrow, they're going to be at the Northern Pass Loop uh, with Dean of, the Dean of Hiking, Carol Brown. So you go there to celebrationsofourmountains.org and find out what that's all about. Also, a reminder to support one of our advertisers. Uh, I'm planning to go support them today, as a matter of fact, out at Pepe's. Yeah, you're gonna make do. it. You're gonna yes, make it out there. Make it. Can't miss it. Uh, Haven't been out there. Well, it's a great place, and at Pepe's uh, uh, is actually new, Tex Mex, but not New Mex. Yeah, New Mex Mex. Well, that's what Bernie had for dinner last night with some frozen Pepe's enchiladas. Oh, I had kept for about a month and a half, and they were still wonderful. And you can also get those and, and send them around if you want to to yeah. some of your friends. Or, like you say, put them in the freezer. But uh, they're in Canyon Tia. They're open for in-house dining, 6761 Donovan Drive. You've eaten there. It's delicious. Yes. It's wonderful. Go, go on a day with us. You might, if you wish. Me? I just may. At uh, 877-2152, home of the Juan and only Margarita. And now our friends at Monterey Asset Management recently changed their name to M1EP Management Corp. And the principal certified property manager is Mike Baca. Visit their website, which is m1ep.com, and uh, check them out. They've got some great programs going on. Patrick Tuttle, of course, is uh, he's one of the top producing realtors in El Paso. And we'd like you to give Patrick a call today at 915-588-1850 to sell, buy, or rent your next home. I've worked with him. He's very good. Yeah. He, he knows the market. Reputation. He knows what he's doing and he's on top of things. And so if you have, if you need a realtor anytime soon, call Patrick Tuttle. But anyway, Erica Marin's here. We were going to ask you some of your credentials, how you got here. Cause you went to Montwood high school. Then I what did. Then, then what did you do? 
oh, I did this and that for several years. Art, you did some artwork. I did some artwork. I worked in marketing as well. And um, then eventually I decided to leave marketing to do my art and also to focus on a more artistic uh, avenue. So then I went to school at NMSU and I got an an undergraduate degree in, in museum conservation. And then when I finished that, I worked as a gallery director for a couple of years. Then I went back to school and I got my graduate degree in history at UTEP. At UTEP. So a, a, a history degree at UTEP, what do you learn about our area? Or is it just history in general of the world? Or No, it's uh, primarily several of the professors are borderlands focused. So we do uh, whatever your interest is in the borderlands then you can find a professor that will, um, you know, share their knowledge with you. So in my case, I was interested in a lot of women's history, a lot of um, civil rights history, and you can all, but if you're interested in Roman history, there's someone for that. If you're interested in in uh, borderlands in another area, say, for example, Asia, there's some someone for that as well. So how do you do that? If you're in school and you're taking courses, you then take that professor's course? You take, you look at it. I mean, several of the professors teach several different types of courses throughout the semester. And you just kind of tailor your experience, as it were. And what you like eventually. What I guess, you like. What yeah. you decide because as when you're getting a school. As long as it fits into yeah. a degree plan, you can tailor your experience and your, and your body of knowledge. And that's what I did, like everyone else. And, well, and you want to tell stories about individuals. I love to tell stories about individuals because the thing is that everybody everybody is has a history. Everybody has a fascinating story. So I'm I'm interested more in the everyday person in in uh, the single mother who raised uh, five children in 1952. Oh, so many of those. So I want to hear about that, and I want to be hear about her and her children. Well, you know, do, do you get people in to interview them or you go after oral histories or what do you do? We do. Sometimes we get people in, uh, sometimes we'll be putting up an exhibition and they'll be like, oh, but I grew up here and I did this and I would love to share. And I'm like, absolutely, we're going to share. And so you tell them to go to the digital wall, Digi? And we ask them to come on in and we'll take an oral history from them. And we'll- You put that on the wall? Uh, we are actually yes through a project called Historias. We have um, we have the first two installments of Historias up, and you're welcome to look at them. And we'll be adding more. The next one that we want to work on is Historias uh, El Paso's homegrown, so that will focus more on World War II, and so and so forth. And so we'll continue to be adding to Historias as this, and you'll see short clips of. Um, different uh, oral histories and interviews. Let me ask you, on the, on the oral histories, a lot of people think, oh my God, I don't know all those things, those questions, it kind of intimidates them. What is the process, just a quick uh, synopsis of the process that you go through when you're doing oral histories? Okay, the process is, I mean, there there is a methodology and there is a standard and methodology that you follow when you study oral histories. But, you know, I think the best way to go about things is to be sincere and to have it uh, conversational yeah. and to ask someone, tell me about yourself and see what they say. Yeah. Where did you grow up? What was your experience sure. there? Well, let's get also, let's get back to uh, South El Paso because you, you talked about the uh, Methodist versus the Catholics. Was that I, a war or what was that? It It's not that it was a war. It's that the Methodists had uh, the, well, let's, let's put it this way. The Catholic church had been there. Father Pinto, established the church sacred heart there and he also established the other one on the other side of uh well where is now Juarez right so we have father pinto so the catholic church had always been there since it was built and then we also have methodist peop, uh groups come in and what they did at the beginning of the century is set up like i said before clinics and daycare and classes for 
for crafts and also for women for skill building, like that sewing. It attracted a lot of people. Sure. Yes, it did. And they provided a very valuable resource, especially in terms of health care and women's uh, prenatal and postnatal care. Did they turn the people into Methodists or what happened? Well, some did, yes. And so that created a, a bit of a contention there, yeah, right? Yeah. The Catholic Church. Right, within the Catholic Church. So there were there was a little bit, there was some rivalry there. But people from war has already been Catholic. They Many showed them, up and just kept going. Some kept going. And then others are like, wow, well, they, they serve us well here and they're helping us. And maybe we ought to look at that because they did also have Bible study courses. So they'd go to Bible study and that sort of thing. But that didn't, that was a smaller percentage. So people pretty much stayed Catholic and they still went to uh, everything that the Catholic uh, Church offered, which was also uh, meals, which was also education, which was also spaces for their children. And so what I want to talk about is the arrival of Father Rahm in 1953. Let's hear it. So Father Rahm arrived here in 1953 with his suitcases and saw that there was a lot of need in the community. And he... Um, what he really primarily wanted to focus on was youth. How do we get the youth to uh, stop criminal activity or disorderly activity and that sort of thing, right? And so at that point, uh, the South Side was plagued with crime, with high crime rates and gang activity. And there were gangs like the 4Fs, the Lucky 13s, the 7Xs, the Cobras, and the Little Nines. And they roamed South El Paso at night and and sometimes they kept enemy groups and outsiders from entering their areas and that sort of thing. Did they leave the general public alone or did they hassle everybody? I think I think they knew who everyone knew who belonged in what in what uh, two blocks. Yeah. Oh, so. Uh, yeah, he, he belongs in this block. That's fine. Leave him alone. That sort of thing. Um, but I think for the most part, it was. Uh, territorial among the youth and not so much with the elders. You weren't going to pester a they little. They left them alone. They left. Yeah. You weren't going to pester a little old lady. And really uh, a lot of these gangs as even as, as father Ram admits, they weren't like high crime kind of games. It was like petty thievery and a lot of uh, silliness and, and just wasting time and not going to cutting school uh, beating each other up, that sort of thing. Uh, and Father Ron, by the way, was the guy with the bicycle, right? He was the father on, yeah, the okay. priest on the bicycle. So he was know. known as a priest on the bicycle. I want to mention that. <laughs> and so these organizing efforts came. And so what Father Ron did is uh, he created from Our Lady's Youth Center, which was uh, known as the, the Knights of Columbus, and then it was Our Lady's Youth Center. He created a plan to undertake one of uh, some of these urgent needs, right? And he employed a tactic that he called aggressive social work. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so what does that mean? So what that meant was that he created sports leagues and he created tutoring opportunities and cultural activities and meeting, st and meeting spaces for all the barrio youth. And he did this with the aid of uh, groups such as... Um, young Catholic uh, men called Los Luises, like Luis, like Los Luises, and they would help him and act as social workers and volunteers at Our Lady's Youth Center. And uh, they would bring in youth and organize them into um, sports leagues like basketball or, oh. what, or what was very, very big at that time was, and what my father remembers is touch football. Oh yeah. Okay. So you you play street football. It's touch football. It's in the street though. It's, yeah, it's in the yeah. street. They had no fields or anything. So they you did it. Where you could. And and one of the cute one I find this really endearing. One of the things that uh, Father Ram would do is he'd drive a, he'd drive around in his bicycle, right around in his bicycle, and he'd stop by when he'd see kids in different barrios, um, or in different um, two block sectors. <laughs> territories yeah <laughs> yeah and he'd stop by when it'd be uh, right right around like uh dusk time when he saw that they were still playing and he'd jump off and he'd uh they he'd join in the game for 15 minutes and he'd go to the next territory and do the same thing and he'd do this all week long and that's how he got to know people and that's how he they became acquainted with him and little by little over the years 
He built trust within these yeah. groups and, and got them into the church and got them into our ladies youth center. Yeah. And how did the Methodists do? How did they uh, find people? I think at this point they were fine. They were dealing with health care. They Got were take they were taking care of healthcare, and that was so important. And the Catholic Church really didn't do that much healthcare well, at the moment. At the moment, they didn't so much, and there was a great. They was still a great need. So, trust me, the Methodists were overwhelmed with their with what they were doing, and they still needed more help. Yeah. And that help came later. But the gang activity was pretty high. But there was also other needs in the community. We got to take and a break here at this okay. point. Oh, okay. Let me do that and come back in a minute. We have a phone number. Throw that out if you might. 915-544-5876 or 915-544-KTSM. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Mike Baca, 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Are you frustrated because you're trying to sell your home, but all you're getting are excuses? Hey, Sean Hannity here to tell you about Great American right in your backyard that could guarantee to sell your home at a price and deadline that you agree to, or he'll have it bought with cash. I'm talking about Brian Bird's brokered by EXP Realty. Now, Brian services the entire El Paso area attracts hundreds of buyers every week and sells hundreds of homes a year. Now, I've talked to a lot of agents and invested millions of dollars into real estate. So believe me, I know one mistake can mean losing a lot of money. Brian spends thousands of dollars every month to attract hundreds of buyers, which helps homes sell fast and for the most money. Now, you risk nothing since at any point, if you're not happy, you can get out of the contract free and clear and pay nothing. But trust me, that's not going to happen. Call the only agent I would call in El Paso. Call Brian Birds right now at 751-1500. That's 751-1500 or online at brianbirds.com. That's brianbirds, B-U-R-D-S.com. And consider your home sold. I feel like I'm being haunted by a pair of headphones. Everywhere I go is a creepy ad for headphones I looked at one time. I hate that feeling like I'm being watched. I downloaded DuckDuckGo and saw a difference right away. Take back your privacy online with DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. Over the last 30 years, 8 million U.S. service members have returned home after serving our country around the world. The biggest challenge of returning vet faces is getting back to everyday life. And a key to that is personal wellness. iHeartRadio has teamed up with some of America's biggest veteran organizations and programs to create Show Your Stripes, a one-stop destination for veterans and their families to find the resources they need. If you're a veteran facing challenges or if you're looking out for the well-being of a veteran you know, visit showyourstripes.org today. Because you never hear this. Hey, hon, I'm late. Chris, I am so pleased you missed the beginning of our meeting. Thanks for making me wait, Dad. I talked to a lot of strangers. Check on your commute. Stay informed. Traffic and weather all day. Or you might never hear the end of it. Well, you were late to our anniversary dinner that one time. Yes, how could I forget? El Paso's News Radio 690 KTSM. 180 over 111, and I had a stroke. I couldn't speak or walk. This is high blood pressure. Get back on your plan. Go to loweryourhbp.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association, American Medical Association, and the Ad Council. News Radio 690 KTSM. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. A quick reminder, Rick Kern's music podcast is called Talk and Rock Radio. Go to talkandrockradio.com. Hear about history of El Paso from musicians. That's an interesting thing. And you've got a thing to say. Yeah, I want to talk about our sponsor, Mission Del Rey. They've just knocked out some walls to expand their showroom to include a new section, the alpaca room, featuring soft plush alpaca blankets, capes, shawls, throws, and cold weather items like hats and scarves. 
Alpaca is one of the world's warmest and softest wools offered. And I I have a per, I personally bought one of their wonderful alpaca sweaters and it keeps you nice and warm. So I bought it from the Mission Del Rey last year. You know what this is? You gotta find it. Here's the address. <laughs> <laughs> and there are great discounts at a clearance section, including scratch and dead items as well as closeouts. Shop online at missiondelray.com or visit their twelve thousand square foot showroom located at forty two uh, one four two one North Lee Trevino. And don't forget to mention you heard about this on the El Paso History Radio Show for a discount. Their phone number is also 915-440-2140. You might need to check them out. Oh, oh I will. Oh, it's a great place. you got to go look. This and is it, wonderful. It started out primarily as a, uh, a, a picking ha- a warehouse for their Internet customers. So they opened it up to the public, and now they've expanded it. So it's a it's an unusual institution. It's kind of like... El Paso Saddle Blanket was, and they have all their products, uh-huh. but they have a whole lot more Indian, what do you got, jewelry and jewelry. They have Native American as well as Mexico. They started out as missionaries helping the Indians down in Gold Canyon. Okay. And yeah. part of the proceeds would go from that. They would help them sell their items on on the internet way, way back. So they're Mission, really, really good people. It was Mission Del Rey back then. A gotcha. couple of minutes left in this segment. Let's get what we can out of you. Where do you want to go? Okay. So I want to continue talking about uh, the people that actually helped Father Rom. Uh, so he, so during this project, he quickly enlisted uh, several uh, South El Paso adults. Some of these people uh, are Lalo del were Lalo, Lalo Delgado, Abelardo Delgado, who uh, is a known poet, uh, Nino Aguilera, and uh, Ventura y Robali. And so some of these people they continued to work and bring in the youth, and also too let's let's also remember that. This was not the only place for youth. There was the boys club. There was Armijo Center. But there was still a need to pull people in. And how did you pull the youth in? You uh, basically made them feel like they had a home. So what Father Rom started noticing is that you couldn't just say, oh, here, look, we're open. Let's just do it here. You guys can come here and play sports at Our Ladies Youth Center. It wasn't working quite like that. So what these uh, social workers did is they went out into the into the barrio, just like Father Ram did on his bike, and they organized these uh, groups. What they what were considered kind of like either local social groups or even uh, so to speak gangs, and they said, "Hey, don't let's why don't you form a league and then you can play this other." block and that sort of thing and, and leave could, your knives at home yeah well <laughs> yes absolutely leave your knives and your petty thievery and and uh nonsense at home and we'll just play sports and Are they converting gangs basically basically yes in wow. many in many cases or converting teens who had nothing more to do and were just like oh we're just a loose street of kids playing something and getting, they organized them getting them to expend that energy that they needed to do something with was in sports was wonderful we got about one minute left one in this segment yes. about a minute okay so basically uh one of the leaders of this uh initiative was lalo delgado he was a social worker like i said a poet and ultimately an activist and youth mentor and i really do want to talk a little more about lalo delgado when we return because these are the precursors of what will be known as the Chicano Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s and 70s so in that, South El Paso. Th- all this was going on in the 50s. 50s and 60s. Okay. 50s and early 60s. And I think in our second hour, we're going to hear about something that went on in the uh, like the 90s that a friend of mine uh, was yes, involved in. Yes, absolutely. Uh, a lot of unusual histories in South El Paso. And so you're chronicling some of these on the DigiWall? We will be chronicling. We do have an upcoming exhibition that will feature a lot of this information. Excellent. Erica Marin is our guest. She's the director of the El Paso Museum of History, looking at history in a different fashion, individuals. So we'll keep doing that next hour and come back after the news. Shall we do that? I think we shall. We'll be there then. Andrew Polk in the control room. Thank you very much. Talk to El Paso Monday through Friday. Appreciate what you do. Two hours, 4 to 6 p.m. See you after the news. Thank you for listening to the El Paso History Show. There's another hour to go, so please stay tuned. This hour is brought to you by Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, home of the one and only Margarita. By Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate. 
915-585-7777. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. We'll be right back after the news, right here on News Radio 690, KTSM, El Paso. Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes, up to 25 cents a gallon. Cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? Some months I make 200 to 300 bucks. <laughs> Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now in the App Store or Google Play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. Use promo code FUEL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next fill-up. You can cash out anytime to PayPal or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code FUEL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code FUEL. Of course my kid's in the right car seat. Well, I think he is. Yeah, my kid's in a booster seat. He was ready to move up. He is ready, right? Her car seat looks like the right size. There are probably rules on when to move up to a booster seat, aren't there? Rear facing, forward facing? I think I have it right. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Don't think you know. Know you know. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. I know my child's in the right car seat. Or else I wouldn't get in the driver's seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. NBC News Radio, I'm Julie Ryan. The Supreme Court is considering the Biden administration's vaccination mandate on large employers. During oral arguments, Justice Elena Kagan said mandates are absolutely necessary during a deadly public health crisis. This is a pandemic in which nearly a million people have died. It is by far the greatest public health danger that this country uh, has faced in the last century. Attorney Scott Keller argued the government mandate is too broad and that scores of workers would choose to quit. That led to Justice Kagan interrupting. Justice Kagan, the standard for what would be necessary for this extraordinary use of emergency power is not what is the best way of accomplishing it. It's an extraordinary use of emergency power occurring in an extraordinary circumstance. COVID-19 hospitalizations are expected to hit a record high because of the Omicron variant. The U.S. reported over 650,000 new COVID cases on Thursday. COVID hospitalizations are approaching the record of 132,000 set last January. Health officials warn the rapid rise in COVID hospitalizations is straining the entire U.S. healthcare system. The Department of Housing and Urban Development is withholding nearly $2 billion in Hurricane Harvey relief aid earmarked for Texas. The federal agency says the state has failed to send in paperwork detailing how the funds will be spent. Four years after Congress approved over $4 billion in aid, nearly half remains unallocated. A Texas teacher is in trouble for quarantining her son in the trunk of her car. Harris County prosecutors say Sarah Beam made her 13-year-old son ride in the trunk on the way to a Houston testing center after he tested positive for COVID-19 on Monday. Court documents say the 41-year-old high school teacher was trying to avoid catching the virus. Lottery officials say there were no tickets sold in the Mega Millions jackpot last night. That means Tuesday's jackpot will be worth $300 million. You're listening to the latest on NBC News Radio. From the 401 Weather Center, this is CBS4 weather forecaster Brady Brewster. A warm weekend ahead, although our temperature is going to cool a bit by the end of it. We'll see increasing cloud cover both Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, the warmest of the two days with our highs in the upper 60s. By Sunday, we'll be in the lower 60s to upper 50s. Breezy conditions as well. We could see wind gusts up to about 25 miles per hour. Be sure to visit our website, cbs4local.com, for a closer look at your forecast. 
iHeartRadio Earth knows small changes make a big difference for the environment. Did you know that keeping your tires even a single PSI lower than recommended means worse mileage and more trips to the pump? So do the environment and your wallet a favor and always check the tire pressure. Brought to you by iHeartRadio Earth and the National Environmental Education Foundation. To find more tips on smarter, sustainable living or to take action in your own community, go to iHeartRadio.com slash earth. The start of a brand new year is a great time to make changes and improvements. So if you have cracked teeth, missing teeth, or loose, old, wobbly dentures, get a beautiful new smile at 1995implants.com, the El Paso dental office where implants are very affordable, as low as $1,995 per tooth, including the implant, abutment, and crown. Other places charge three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 an implant, but at 1995implants.com, you're going to save a lot of money on dental implants that are top quality and long-lasting. Plus, we offer a free consultation with the dentist, free standard x-rays, and convenient financing plans that fit your budget. Make this new year your best year ever with 1995implants.com. For more information, please see our website, 1995implants.com. That's 1995implants.com. Salva Español. The El Paso History Show with Jackson Polk and Melissa Sargent is 10 a.m. this Saturday with another show about the culture and heritage of the El Paso area. The El Paso History Show is sponsored by Patrick Tuttle, Colwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant in Canyon Tio, Mission Del Rey Southwest, Keystone Heritage Park, and Monterey Asset Management. It's the El Paso History Show, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Now streaming on Facebook and YouTube and on News Radio 690. Talk El Paso is going daily. Join host Andrew J. Polk weekdays at 4 with the Borderlands only live local talk radio show, breaking down the impact of the news and taking your calls. That's Talk El Paso live Monday through Friday at 4 right here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Sponsorship and advertising opportunities are also available. To find out on how you can affordably reach an affluent and highly educated demographic, please call iHeartMedia at 915-351-5473. That's 915-351-5473. News Radio 690 KTSM El Paso. News Radio 690 KTSM presents the second hour of the El Paso History Show with documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk and historian Melissa Sargent, streaming live at KTSMRadio.com. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. By Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, home of the one and only Margarita. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino, with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. And now, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polks. Now, Jackson here. Hey, we're talking uh, hour two here about an El Paso History moment produced by Melissa Sargent for the El Paso History Alliance. And uh, it's a page on Facebook. And her story today is about John Dillinger in El Paso. Public enemy number one slept here. January 9, 1934. Famous Depression-era bank robber and America's first public enemy number one, John Dillinger and two members of his gang rolled into El Paso. The law was hot on their trail after the murder of Officer William Patrick O'Malley during a bank robbery in East Chicago. Dillinger felt if he could escape into Mexico, he would be beyond the reach of the law. The three men checked into El Paso's Gardner Hotel, and Dillinger signed the register as John D. Ball and stayed in room 221. But the tale is told that Dillinger and his gang felt the strong law presence on the border was not going to make a crossing into Mexico possible from El Paso. So Dillinger and his men checked out of the hotel a few days later and headed west to Tucson, where he and his gang were finally captured. More history next week on El Paso History Moments. I'm Melissa Sargent for the El Paso History Alliance. And you do that for the Alliance every week. Yes, I do. And did you know that the Gardner Hotel is turning 100 years old this oh, it's year? It's been, and it's the most continually operating. That's right. In and, El Paso. And they're planning a big party, I believe, uh, later this year. March, I believe, is the, the actual oh, birth date. And so we'll be talking more about that. With uh, Hopefully we can get the owners, Laura, Joe and Laura Nebhan, in because 
Debbie had, Joe's father was one that originally bought the hotel. Yeah, I think his, his uh, children now run it, don't they? Well, yeah, he's still involved, but the kids, his daughter is pretty much involved in that. But it's it's a great family establishment for over 100 years. So. There's a program idea right there. Okay. Yeah. And also, you do this for that History Alliance? Yes, I do. The El Paso History Alliance is a group of historians who promote architectural and cultural history of El Paso and is managed by Max Grossman and Mark Stone. And remember, in El Paso, win with thousands of pictures, stories, and much more. And that page is managed by Barbara Given Bainey and her team of volunteer editors for the page. And she's the chief admin. You got Margaret right. Smith, Rick Duncan, uh, Ken Weiss, Craig Hayes, Rick Nahara, and Isaac Williams. And they're all volunteers. And that's yeah. on Facebook. And if you ever, uh, uh, Erica Moran is our guest today. If you ever want to find a picture or look at a picture about El Paso history, that's a good place to go. I know your digi wall has a lot, but this but, this is an incredible resource. Yes, it is. It is. I so, follow it. Let's go back where you wanted to go. Okay. So I want to talk about... Uh, uh, those social workers that um, that were inspired by Father Rom and who Father Rom uh, helped uh, kind of, I guess, cultivate. So one of them is Lalo Delgado. And then, of course, uh, he had friends in the neighborhood hood, such as Salvador El Huevo, the Egg Ramirez, who was the director of the Boys Club. So after Father Rom left, as you know, he did leave. He, uh, he went to Brazil uh, in the early 60s. Uh, 60s, uh, they convinced uh, Father Thomas, who was now the the person in charge, to support them in developing what they called the South El Paso Juvenile uh, Delinquency Project. And this also had federal funds attached. So what they were able to do with this uh, uh, JD project is um, continue that work of concentrating on four specific self-identifying areas known as Los Seis Infiernos, the Alley Cats, the Blue Stars, Blue Stars, and Chihuahua Cougars. And then they expanded to more. And what they did is they hired more social workers to help them with this. They uh, worked with the youth uh, with areas to compete in street sports, such as touch football and basketball. They continued mentorship uh, with their time and focus were more diverted to uh, positive development and creating social pride in their activities through organizing fundraisers and coronation balls and tournaments rather than drugs and petty crime or getting involved in things that just did not help them. So as these social groups learn to organize and channel their energies, they also learned about leadership and social inequities because there was there were a lot of problems in the neighborhood that uh, needed you needed, needed solving. For example, um, there was still a lack of access to proper health care. A lot of these tenements were owned by slumlords and they kept them in, in deplorable conditions. So uh, people needed to fight for better housing and better living conditions. And so this these were part of the social inequities that they fought against. And so it grew this consciousness of... Um, of uh, kind of housing rights and access and and several of these uh, movements started here. So their need for social equity was happening and it was happening concurrently. For example, uh, Nina Cordero was working uh, on health care access and she was one of the founders of La Fe Clinic, right? So that was happening and Lalo and Salvador Ramirez worked as mentors. Eventually what happened is that they helped form a group called Maya, Mexican American Youth Association. It was a non-university mm -hmm. group. It was, it was the focus being larger that we're not just the Alley Cats and the Blue Stars and the Chihuahua Cougars. We are much larger. We create this larger group group of youth that can help each other, help themselves. They started a hot lunch program for elderly people, and they also participated in farm workers rallies in the night in the 1960s. So uh, that's the boycott grapes. That's the boycott Andrew, grapes, you, 1965. Andrew, you got a picture of the grapes there, I think, don't uh, you? Yes. And, and so this little, that, that little, uh, the front page, the front cover of that book you see here is called office in the alley report on project with gang youngsters. That was written by father Rom in 1958, because of course he did have to report back and he did have to report on his work. So became politically active at some point. There. He did. He did. And honestly, he continued this work in in Brazil. 
and he continued it throughout his life. And he was known as a person that was very much rooted in helping youth and to combat drug addiction and uh, other social ills. Good for him, yeah. And that's, so that Maya important. is kind of like the the end of what you had here. And where do you get all this? Is this in a book or two? Or so this uh, is from several places. I uh, I of course uh, look at uh, some of my scholarly sources. Being one one for the early parts, I I used uh, uh, Vicky Ruiz from Out of the Shadows. Uh, that's a that's a really good book to use for. Hold that up for this. Put it up near the camera and watch the monitor. Sure. So you can see. Sort there you of, go. So you can you see we're that? Still on the boycott. We're a little bit behind. So oh, there you go. You're on Facebook. There you It'll go. Come up. Okay. So from out in the shadows, that's that's Vicky Ruiz. I of course used this book, and then I used a little bit of Ringside Seat to a Revolution. That's uh, Romo's book. Doctor Romo. Doctor Romo, and then I also utilized. Uh, Dr. Sandra Enriquez's uh, dissertation on Chicano civil rights is called El Barrio Unido Jamás Será Vencido. So I did use her her dissertation for this as well. And I also used another source, uh, uh, Antonio Chacha Marin, who happens to be my father and was an alley cat. Just happened to be your father. Happened to be uh, my he, father. He was an alley cat, huh? He was an alley cat, and he was the first president of Maya. Oh, okay. So you have in, 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 so inherent knowledge. So I do have an here. insight. I, I do have some insider perspective to yeah. to this particular oh, yeah. uh, part of history, and so I did want to share a little bit about that because it's not always known. Well, how did it start? Well, how did it begin? Well, it began with with Catholic youth, and it began with uh, different groups coming together to form one larger group. But I do want to share to uh, conclude this uh, part of my. Uh, talk, I want to share the last passage in this um, Office in the Alley report on project with young gangster youngsters. And this is Father Harold Rahm's writing. The breezes from the mountains still stir up the sandy dust. Bits of newspaper, matchsticks, and other debris continually protrude from open garbage disposal cans. Frequently, a lonely dog or a forlorn cat will cross one's path. But for me, this is no longer a lonely sight. One knows that continued efforts, hard work, inspiration, and sweat will at long last fulfill a dream, the dream that social justice brings about decent living conditions in which people may dwell with dignity. And that's uh, from Father Rom. This is from Father Rom. Interesting stuff here. Well, Erica Maroon, we thank you for everything you're doing. We're going to come back and talk further. But we have a guest on the phone here that I mentioned to you. Excellent. And uh, there are other stories from the South El Paso area in other decades. So we'll hear from uh, a woman named Evelyn here shortly, and we can take a break first and come back in a minute. But, uh, and, and also after that, perhaps we can uh, take a look at some, some of the history museum exhibits and what you're thinking, what you're planning, if you wish. Absolutely. And, and your, your program and also how to donate. Yes, uh, absolutely. Oh, yes. <laughs> so Evelyn, stay on hold. Do you have a quick report, either you or Andrew, on what's going on? Oh, on uh, uh, I've got one here. One, one to throw in. Uh, Charlie Cordova, who would also suggest about the Chuco, Chucos, he wanted to know about Gaspar Enrique and his ties to Bowie High Schools and the Barrio. Is that anything you Gaspar maybe in future? Uh, well, he, yeah. grew, he grew up in South El Paso for a while, and his parents said this is too rough. They moved to Asleta. But he apparently did some work, I guess, maybe as a teacher. Oh, he was the art, yeah. the art oh, yes. teacher at Bowie High School. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. He was mentor to many, many artists uh, in Bowie High School. So do you know him and do you know about I his... do know him and I do. I am familiar with his studio. And we did exhibit one of his pieces there at El Paso Museum of History a couple of years ago. A great guy. Great guy. And he's still he's still doing artwork. Absolutely. And I think Cheech Marin collects him. Yes, he does. And so there's an interesting yeah, tie there from close, yeah. from the Barrio through uh, through Asleta. And he lives now down in San Elizario. He does. And that's a great studio. Great got studio. Yeah. It is. <laughs> fabulous. It's lovely. All right. Erica, Marin, stick around. We've got lots more to do here. We've got a call. Like I said, Evelyn's going to be in a minute. And we'll take a break. What else you got on, on social media, anybody? Uh, let's see. We got a lot of people tuning in and chiming in with us today. Appreciate it. Like you said, uh, Charlie Cordova, but then also Victor Luciano Guzman welcoming us from uh, New Anthony, New Mexico, uh, Mark Morales, Rose Matthews from Springfield, Tennessee. Oh. And then uh, I have to mention way up at the top of the show, we did have a uh, uh, Herbert von Feilich tuning in from Winston-Salem, of course. Ah, uh, yeah, he's, 
He's back home. He got snowed in in Virginia, told me. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> so he, and he'll, he'll be on next week, by the way. Oh, exactly. And we're going to have him on talking about some uh, uh, Mexican Revolution uh, pieces that were just amazing. All right. Uh, take a break. Evelyn, don't go anywhere. Be back in just a moment on the El Paso History Radio Show. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the Old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. Research shows that people remember radio ads with repetition. So to help you remember that Liberty Mutual Insurance Company customizes your home insurance so you only pay for what you need, here's a repetitive ad. <clears throat> okay. Research shows that people remember radio ads with repetition. So to help you remember that Liberty Mutual Insurance Company customizes your home insurance so you only pay for what you need, here's a repetitive ad. <sighs> Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Watching TaxSlayer calculate your refund feels like climbing to the apex of a roller coaster. Here we go! And flying down the tracks. <laughs> and maximum refund speed. File for free with TaxSlayer Simply Free and get your guaranteed maximum refund. TaxSlayer. File fearlessly. Why? Why take a chance? Why risk a mistake? Why say something? We all have reasons why we choose to ignore the things that give us pause, that seem out of place, that don't feel right. The word why can either paralyze us or empower us to stand up and protect what we love. So if you see something, why do you say something? I see safe for my family. I see safe for my friends. I see safe for my students. We see safe for each other. I see safe because all of this matters. We all have something worth protecting. A why that unifies this community we're all a part of. So protect your everyday. Report suspicious activity to local authorities. If you see something, say something. Rich is just a really, really, really good guy. The term good egg isn't enough to describe him. He's also certified organic and free range. Rich puts the cap back on everything. The toothpaste, the olive oil, the shampoo, everything. He lets his 10-year-old nephew beat him at virtual tennis, even though he can straight up slay his 10-year-old nephew in virtual tennis. When the toilet paper is running low, Rich replaces the roll on the actual holder, not just on the back of the toilet. Rich is texting and driving. Rich, no, what are you doing, Rich? I was just telling everyone how great you are. Texting and driving makes good people look bad. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. El Paso's News Radio, 690 KTSM. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. 
Next week, let you know who's coming in here on January 15th, 2022. And that's right. We are live today as uh, we haven't been for a while, but uh, we couldn't get access to a live studio, but now we do in the new year. Our guest is Harry Von Felich next week, and he's going to explain an important part of the Mexican Revolution, the Santa Isabel Massacre. Now, that happened down in Mexico, but had major implications for El Paso. Also, we're going to ask Patricia Kidney to call in because she was the one who came up with this idea in the first place. And uh, she, she refers to that same massacre as Gringo's Curve. It was January 1916 and was a major part of events on the road to Columbus, New Mexico uh, raid there. So what do you got? I don't have anything. Oh, nothing at all on. Uh, oh, did uh, you? How about so you're talking about this Gringo's Curve? If you wish. Uh, yeah. Concordia Heritage Association will host a memorial service on Mon this Monday, January 10th, honoring the 18 American miners massacred at the by Vistas at San Isabel, Mexico, on January 10th, 1916. We were just talking about. And that will be at 1230 p.m. at the Masonic Cemetery in Concordia Cemetery. If you'd like more information, call 915-591-2326. And, uh, just want to, it's something you might want to go see or learn some more history. And that's on, uh, it's coming Monday. We have a couple of callers on hold. Raul, stay where you are. We're going to go to Evelyn. Evelyn, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning, Zach. How are you doing? We're doing pretty good. If you don't mind, take a couple of minutes and explain your South El Paso story because you were a counselor at Hart uh, School, were you not? Yeah, Hart Elementary School way back in uh, 1992 and uh, started off with uh, parenting classes. And uh, through that group, a lot of mothers came together, and we started realizing that uh, part of the issues there with the Segunda Barrio were that the streets, you know, they, they were concerned about syringes and diapers and trash, but these children walked to and from school. And so we formed a group, uh, Las Chulas del Barrio, and the main focus was to problem solve in a positive way, but also to sweep the streets, to clean up. How'd that work? Excellent. It was wonderful. We had a lot of support. So happened that the El Paso Police Department had the bike patrol that used to go down and patrol down in the Segundo. And uh, so there was some concern from the parents saying, hey, you know, there's some not necessarily rival gangs. I liked what Miss Marin was saying, that, they, you know, they're not necessarily killing each other, but, you know, they have their territory. And so the uh, bike patrol said, not a problem. We'll go down there and we'll just cycle around and see what we can do. Maybe it's fair to Father Rom. And uh, they did. And so we were able to start cleaning the streets, and that it worked out. It grew and grew and grew, and uh, it became quite uh, a project by the end of two or three years. We were doing big stuff down there. And your principal got involved because they saw you basically going to the women of the school, and you got them organized, and then you started getting equipment. Yeah. Principal was great, Maddie Mendoza, who unfortunately has passed away now. Uh, he just saw the, the possibility and the potential. You know, there were a lot of elements down there in the barrio. It could come together, but and somebody just had to kind of bring it all together and put a focus on it, and that's what Las Chulas did. The um, El Paso uh, Public Schools got wind of what we were doing with parenting and involving parents with their students, their children in the school, and they thought, well, let us uh, donate some brooms and shovels. So they did that, and then the uh, county commissioner at the time was Orlando Fonseca that said, you know, the county can also get involved. They gave us gloves because we were basically just working, uh, you know, with bare hands and trash bags that uh, I was buying and trying to drag the trash from corner to corner. And then the uh, uh, maintenance department said, hey, we've got some uh, of those gray bins that we used to haul to and from the, the garbage collectors used to go, you know, house to house and dump our trash cans from the neighborhood. We got some of those. So, yeah, the city got involved. How long did this go on? Uh, I would say, uh, let me see, 96, it finally began to die down once I left Hart School and was um, basically recruited to go begin as a counselor. Uh, when it was reconstituted, I had to leave that program and tried to keep it going. But, you know, things change with uh, the needs of the school and students and parents. And so it died down from there. I went on to uh, Ray Mateus Academy, which really was just more of a on-site assignment for me. So what happened? So that, that was the, uh, the emphasis you put on it basically mm -hmm. single-handedly with, and you started getting help and more help driving the program. Yeah. And got it going. So that's what can be done. Uh, Erica, your thoughts. Well, I think that's beautiful. That's a uh, commendable work. I think that a lot of times that's what happens is we come in 
uh, we're working in the neighborhood or and there's uh, there's already an impetus through uh, people's own uh, initiative to also want to do that. You you were employed in the neighborhood and you saw a need and together with community members, you got together and you started something that was very positive and helpful for the community. And that's kind of how things always generate and bring out the best outcomes. Out of your own pocket too, <laughs> Evelyn. Yeah. yeah, a little bit, you know, it starts off that way, right? When, I mean, I did, it was a passion. I mean, I absolutely love the Segundo Barrio. I was so pleased that I got a sign there. And, uh, what happened, uh, Erica, in my particular case, was I was a school counselor. So the, the focus of my job was really to work within the school, the teachers, parents, but the students to try to give them a positive uh, take on where they live. You know, often I was hearing people say, you've got to do better so you can get out of the barrio. And honestly, I saw that, that they did not. I mean, that's where they lived, and the parents are absolutely beautiful. And uh, so what we did with the uh, Chula del Barrio, the um, organization partly uh, from the Keep El Paso Beautiful and Keep Texas Beautiful, they uh, made some T-shirts for us, which were beautiful with La Chula del Barrio, where our colors were gold and purple. And then the children, they were so proud because we swept every week on Wednesday morning. They got T-shirts if their uh, family member uh, was involved, they got a teacher that said, um, El futuro del barrio. The future. And, uh, yeah. That's adorable. The future, yeah, the future of the barrio. And believe it or not, we had some uh, very talented police officers at the time working, and uh, they came together and said, uh, one of them was actually Captain uh, Greg Bricky, who I don't, I think he's retired now, but we recorded a song for the Segundo Barrio, and um, we went, I, as a school counselor, I went through the school at every grade level and asked students to write a verse or a thought about their home. He put it together, and we recorded it. It was really super great. Sounds like you got a whole lot done there by just getting involved. Yeah, and, and, and it was all not even work. I loved every single day of it. I, I, I swear it was a passion of mine. Uh, oh, Evelyn. Evelyn Kasari, thank you for ringing up with that. You and I talked about this earlier, and uh, I got to thinking it would fit in with today's events and uh, what we're doing. Yes, here. absolutely. Well, thanks for ringing up. Have a good day. Appreciate your calling. Thanks you so much, Thank Ellen. you. Take care. We'll see you again. All right. Bye-bye. 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 Interesting history there. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I, know, I knew her from high school, and I didn't know what she did since high school, so I've, I've asked her, what did, what did you do? So she was a counselor, yeah. went down to the South El Paso area, and just did what she could. And I guess that happens a lot. And um, that's some of the stories you were telling. Another sure. perspective. Yes, absolutely. We got another call. Raul, I need to ask you to hold through the break because we're going to have to take a break here. And, uh, and uh, Raul will no doubt have something interesting to, to contribute. So uh, Erica Marin is in the house, the director of the El Paso Museum of History. And Moses well, Sargent is in the I'm house. I'm here. I'm and you're here. director of whatever you do. I'm director of everything. There you go. Ask Bernie. <laughs> ask, indeed. <laughs> if you, you want us to have him give us a call. Who? On the radio station. Who? Anybody. Oh, yes. Okay. I thought you meant somebody's particular. No, no. I was going to okay. say people, but still call in. But they have a phone number. You have, that's, that's right. That's, that's where what you're I'm going. To okay. Speak and listen to my words. Okay. 915-544-5876 or 915-544-KTSM. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, Invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Mike Baca, 915-592-4549, 915-592-4549. iHeartRadio Earth is here with little tips for a healthier planet. It sure feels good to step into a warm car after letting it heat up for a few minutes. 
However, this practice wastes gas, increases emissions, and pollutes the air. Limit idling your car to no more than three minutes to save money at the gas station and improve air quality. Brought to you by iHeartRadio Earth and the National Environmental Education Foundation. To find more tips for smarter, sustainable living or to take action in your own community, go to iHeartRadio.com slash Earth. Let's help make sure COVID doesn't take another mom. Another wife. Another papa. Let's not lose any more favorite uncles. Or lifelong friends. Vaccines help prevent severe illness and death from COVID and the broken hearts they leave behind. We can do this. Find vaccines near you at vaccines.gov. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Man, how can you afford gas for that big SUV? I pay less for gas than everyone else. I got the free Get Upside Gas app and get up to 25 cents a gallon cash back every time I buy gas. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're getting up to 25 cents off a gallon with the free Get Upside Gas app while I'm paying full price? You know it. People earned over a million dollars last year. You just got to take a picture of your gas receipt and bam, up to 25 cents a gallon cash back. You don't have to tell me twice. I'm downloading the free Get Upside Gas app now. Download the free Get Upside app now in the App Store or Google Play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. Use promo code HOT for a 25 cent a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next tank. Just download the free GetUpside app at the App Store or Google Play and use promo code HOT. Save money on gas on every fill-up. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code HOT. That's H-O-T. Visit GetUpside.com for terms. Liberty Mutual Insurance Company presents... Doug. And we're back with Limu, Emu, and Doug for the final question. Category is things you climb. All right, Limu, what do you think? You sure? We're going with Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Uh, oh, so close. We were looking for stairs. Huh. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. News Radio 690 KTSM. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. Part of our history today, we're going to talk about what's going on this week only in El Paso, Inc. Shall I say the first word for you? Yes. Rents. Rents, I know. (laughs) Shall I say the whole next word for you? Rents continue to rise in the borderland as apartment occupancy hits historic highs. You just had that page. <laughs> Sorry about and you, that. You want, to, you want to read my line? Yes, I will. Why El Paso State Rep Art Fierro is contesting the candidacy of his challenge. I'll read your line. El Paso <laughs> Business Journal, El Paso Inc. is available for home or business delivery. To receive El Paso Inc., order it online at elpasoinc.com. That came out okay, even though it didn't I go. I had it right here. Right. Yeah, I watched you. Uh, anyway, park and, <laughs> park and ride, shall we say. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Let's go back and hear the tape on that. We'll, not, we'll have no idea what we hit. Erica Marin's in the house here. we got a couple of callers on the phone here. Let's go to the guys in order. This would be Raul. Hey, Raul, how's it going? Just fine, Jackson. Great show, like always. Congratulations to your guest on her gig. Thank you. Thanks for Thank holding, for her. by the way. We had to put you on hold for a while. Yeah. Hey, um, I got a guest suggestion, a local boy who grew up in the barrio. He got his undergraduate degree from Yale. He got his Ph.D. in geology from Harvard. He's a professor at UTEP who endowed a a geology entrepreneurial program with one million dollars. He was uh, former Mayor Ray Caballero's best friend as they were growing up, and that's Dr. Phil Goodell. Yes, I know. I've had him on before. Yes, Phil's been on before. Yeah. And he is a great resource on geology. Maybe in February, uh, you never, you never can tell what's going to happen. But no, he, I've, I've, done, I've gone hiking with Phil. Yeah. And you, you would be we'll amazed at what that's all about. Uh, I don't he's know. A if great tour yeah, guide for I the mountains. Opportunity to do that too. I don't know if he's still hiking or not, but he can sure tell you stories about oh, the Franklin yeah. Mountains. 
It's amazing. Well, good I idea. I could tell you some stories about growing up in El Barrio and, and, and Mayor Caballero. So yeah. I, I, I was, unfortunately, I didn't get to listen to that program. I'd certainly love to have an opportunity to listen to him. Again. It's a ways back, but yeah, we may have him on again. All right. Well, thanks for ringing up with that. Appreciate it. Take care, Roll. You bet. You take her easy. All right. I'm going to other callers here. Uh, Erica Moran, you ready for another caller? Sure. Here we go. This would be Mark. Mark, how's it going? Hi. How are you doing, Erica? Hi, Mark. How are you? What's up? Pretty good. Erica and Jackson, uh, great program, great program. Thank you. I just wanted to share very quickly um, that my uh, paternal uh, genealogy goes to back to Segundo uh, Barrio. My, my great-grandfather, Simon and Vicencia Albocato Calamia, immigrated to the U.S. from Sicily in 1896, and they came through uh, Veracruz, ended up in Juarez. My great-grandfather, uh, Simon, established a bakery there and then eventually moved to Segundo Barrio, where they resided at 620 South Florence Street. Great history. And that is, wh- that is where my, my grandfather was born and later, um, or he was one years old when he was brought over from Salaparuta, Sicily. And then my father was born there in 1921. And attended Sacred Heart. Great so he, family. He grew up there and learned to um, uh, fight his way to survive there. A little Italian kid, uh, Spanish ah. was his first language, yeah. and uh, the Mexican kids uh, noticed he was different. But they eventually accepted him. He was known as Pepito there, and uh, grew up to really appreciate what his situation was. Later, became a well-known civil rights and criminal defense attorney here in El Paso, very oh, yeah. well-known, especially by the Mexican-American community here. And it was his early uh, experiences there in Segundo Barrio that uh, made him aware of the need for civil rights and protecting Oh, he would. Yeah, that makes of, a lot of sense. Uh, he, he saw it firsthand. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Good to talk to you. That's yes, wonderful. Thank you very thank much. You. All right, you take her easy. Uh, and it's an interesting history uh, uh, of so many people have either glanced off of or uh, their family had been part of the Segundo Barrio. Yes, and yes. and it's an interesting thing. By the way, uh, you guys got Mark Howe is going to be at Pepe's today. Oh, good, he's he back. Just, he just phoned in there, so that's good, good to hear. Uh, so we have a we'll have a reunion at Pepe's today. Yes. Uh, anyway, back to the point of where we are. Uh, we have the uh, director of the History Museum here, and the the point being is that um, you you are you are looking at more of the individual, uh, Erica Marin. We're looking more at micro histories. We want to uh, share more than what's been put out there in history books, more than what's what uh, just seems like common knowledge. We want to share everybody's story, and that includes um, from the woman that you remember that lived on the corner of such and such who used to sell candies outside yeah. her door. And I I want to hear those stories. Those are interesting. The grocers, the businesses, the the, the businesses, uh, the people that took care of our children, that sort of thing. So I am interested in that particularly because I think that everybody deserves a place at, uh, to share their story. Well, let me ask you a slightly different kind of question. You're you're the director of the history museum. Would you be interested in figuring out somehow how to use our history to attract tourists here? And and maybe the individual stories would be of interest, but we have we have big topics that have occurred here, big events that have occurred here. We have all sorts of uh, big events that have occurred here. From, would that be of interest to you? Yes, it's always of interest. Uh, tourism is always of interest to us because we want to get people from outside to come and visit El Paso yeah, as and well. spend their money. Yeah, absolutely. It, it enriches the economy and and helps us here. So absolutely. In fact, uh, we're working on a, currently we're working on drawing up some ideas for uh, some more marketing to uh, create some outreach and some buzz in, in, uh, and actually in Mexico. So we're looking at ways, how do we draw people in? Because people do come from Mexico quite frequently. They only, the only thing is that they come here a lot of times to visit family or to shop. So how would we get people from Mexico to come to the museums? So that is what we are currently working on because we do think that we have valuable stories that are interesting. What about the mission trail? Is that something you want to push? Well, it's something that has been pushed before through our museum. Oh, sure. And it's something that uh, has always been talked about and shared. It's not that I'm not interested. I am interested. The only thing is that I want to share other stories as well. Sure. 
So I do new want new stories, to, new, new stories, yeah. new stories, because we do have several avenues for that. We have, of course, the county, and of course, there's a place in our permanent exhibit for it. And like I, like I was sharing with you off air, is that we do want to talk about those things a little more. And the great part about it is that I'll be able to focus this year a little more on our permanent exhibition and on little offshoot exhibitions from there. Well, you have the door of the uh, uh, sort of mission in your in your collection. We sure do. What do you think of that? I love it. I love that we have such a nice artifact to share because uh, those older ones, we either have archaeological pieces or we have something that's like 150 (laughs) years old, maybe. Yeah. But but those 300 year old, 400 year old uh, artifacts, those are so rare. And so we're really proud of our Isleta door as well as our Hidon chest, too. Very cool. That's. And that's from the from 18th century. San Elizario, that, that chest? Yes. Yeah. It's also from San Elizario as the Isleta is from Isleta, you know? That's so neat. It's such great doors. You also have an exhibit now on uh, World War II. We do. El Paso's homegrown World War II. So this exhibition focuses uh, primarily on El Pasoans and their experiences during World War II. For example, uh, Company E or and other El Pasoans who were enlisted to fight or who uh, voluntarily joined, and also the people that stayed behind, the women, the families, uh, the women who entered the workforce. For example, uh, uh, there was a lot of space vacated by the men who were out fighting, so Asarco hired many women to uh, join the workforce there. So we had our own. Uh, we had our Rosies here from Santa oh, yeah. Town. Mm-hmm. And so Asarco's I, a whole nother story all by itself. So there's that. And there's, of course, uh, Tom Lee's uh, Tom Lee's participation in World War II as an art as a course war correspondent and artist. And so we also have a piece there. we have several uh, items that we actually borrowed from the Tom Lee Institute. And that includes um, Time magazines. That includes his original suitcase and um, lots of different artifacts. Well, And he's featured in the art museum, obviously. Yes, he is. And um, for us, he's important to this story because he was from El Paso and we did want to share a segment of that. So we have, of course, Tom Lee, then we have the other local stories, and then we have uh, the women and we have Company E. Lots going on there. Should we take a call here? Uh, This may be slightly off topic. James, what are you up to? Not much, not much. Just seeing that you guys have a director from the museum there. And you guys are talking about history, and I had mentioned on there about the, the the Lost Padre Mine of El Paso in the Franklin Mountains. What do you know about that, Erica? I don't know a whole lot, but maybe James can enlighten us this morning. <laughs> you want to hear about it? Here it comes. What's up, James? Tell us. Real quick, you know that back in 1600s, Juan Oñente, 1598 or so to 1623 or so, ruled the El Paso. And uh, he came through here. He didn't stay here. Correct. But he ruled the whole El Paso region well, as um, the viceroy of Spain. Yeah, but he, yeah, but it was just basically natives, Americans that were here. There were no Spaniards here at that time much. They didn't leave any Spaniards here at that, in that point, but go, go ahead. What's the last part of your mind? And so one, seeing as he was the ruler of the area, the trading hub, El Paso, which is your trade route from north to south and east to west. You also have the greatest uh, bank system or or bank vault, which will be a mountain. It's the mine that they were mining the gold out of. And then you have, in 1680, the revolt. And that uh, they hid all their wealth inside that same mine. That's the and theory. The you're you're right. Years and also, you, you're supposed to be able to see it from the uh, mission in Juarez. Uh, on a given day, you can see the oh, entrance. Ch- well, church tower or something. Yeah, like that. some of your some of your information is a little bit different than than the history because Onyate was here for about two weeks, and then he came back through here again on his way to uh, back to Spain. But he really didn't quote rule El Paso. There was nobody here to rule. The uh, mission in Juarez was established in like 1659, and he was long gone by then. The public revolt occurred 82 years after he came through here. And again, the Pueblo Revolt, yes, whatever they carried with them from the Pueblo Revolt uh, back down to El Paso, that's a whole interesting story, may have gone into some hole in the mountain, you never know. 
And uh, if you find it, would you call us? I'd be more than happy to. I bet if you find it, you won't call us. <laughs> That's just, just my... well, so here's the thing is everybody's looking for a mine entrance in the Franklin Mountains okay. that hasn't been discovered, right? Well, I, I don't know. Maybe somebody found it and they don't they didn't tell us. Well, it's it's posted there on YouTube underneath the Padre Mine showing the exact location GPS to a mine entrance in the Franklin Mountains. That fits the description. Well, the, if you the, look on the east side, there's a square, old square building on the mountainside, right by the A for the A that they soon put up there. There's that that ravine to the right of that ravine near the base. There's a square building. That all right, used I to tell you what, there. you're a bit off. Your mission tower. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, uh, James. You're a bit off topic for what we're doing today. But uh, at some point, we may take up that subject and uh, be sure to listen in at that point. Okay, fair enough. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Take Thanks care, for James. You take it easy. Well, we got uh, Erica Marin here. We got to take a break here and come back in a minute and wrap up what we've been doing. Uh, it's easy to get off topic with callers, but they have a lot of ideas about our history. So, back in a moment with the El Paso History Radio Show. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. I feel like I'm being haunted by a pair of headphones. Everywhere I go is a creepy ad for headphones I looked at one time. I hate that feeling like I'm being watched. I downloaded DuckDuckGo and saw a difference right away. Take back your privacy online with DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. First, we decide where we want to go. Then we need to know the best way to get there. Hi, my name's Adam Barada. I'm the owner of Advantage Gold. We're the highest rated precious metals firm in the country. We teach people how to own physical gold and silver. Now, we've won the Best of TrustLink Award four years in a row because we educate our clients on how to buy gold and silver the right way. We don't pay celebrity spokespeople millions of dollars. We'd rather pass that value on to you. Call 800-900-8000 and speak with one of our experts. We'll send you a free gold kit along with my latest number one national best-selling book, The Great Devaluation. Call 800-900-8000. That's 800-900-8000. Get the best information, the best process, the best service, the best value. Call Advantage Gold at 800-900-8000. Call 800-900-8000. I'm Stephen Rinella, host of the Meat Eater podcast and the Netflix original series Meat Eater. As a hunter and wildlife enthusiast, the question comes up, how can you justify killing and eating animals that you love and protect? Well, that's part of what we wrangle with on the Meat Eater podcast, along with broader and often funnier discussions about living an outdoor life in the modern world. We insist on sharing challenging opinions to inspire thought and action. Listen to the Meat Eater podcast on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. News Radio 690 KTSM El Paso. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. We're about to wrap up today with Erica Marin, but uh, Melissa, you had a thought about the Franklin Mountain well, State yeah, Park. Yeah, there's there's thing going on now. It's a great time of year to hike the mountains. And on January 22nd at 9 a.m., there's a woman's hike. Ooh. And then on January, yes, strictly women. 
And then January 23rd at 10 a.m., they're going to have, in honor of National Pie Day, they're going to have an outdoor cooking class where you learn to cook outdoors on a, on you know coals and on such. On a pie. Make a, a pie, pie. Make a pie on the, on the fire. So give Diana Moya, the park interpreter, a call at 915-444-9100, extension 224, or visit the website for more information, which is texasparksandwildlife.texas.gov. And I hope they get that tramway back operating one day soon. I hope but that's so. I not heard up they to got them. some more funding, so keep your I've fingers crossed. I've never been. Sorry? I've never been. It's a great short little hot, you know, it takes you right up. It's not like the big but ones. But it's now unavailable because of the insurance problem. Uh, the tramway oh yeah, is closed. still running, but they can't put people on it because the insurance. It, it needs oh, work. Man. Insurance obligation. Anyway, enough of that. Back to Erica. We have a, a few minutes left here. Talk about the, the history you, you presented today. Individual stories is what you want to hear. Yeah, I want to hear micro histories. I want to hear stories about the uh, everyday person, about anyone who's interested in putting their stories up. That's why we have digi.org. That's a community curated uh, archive, digital archive. And you are welcome. The public is welcome to submit their photographs and uh, anything that they think is relevant. And it's a valuable resource for the community and it's open to all. And people actually often use it from scholars to students to um, community members. And it's fun and engaging and you can, uh, you can actually navigate through it. And it recently relaunched, we recently revamped the website. So it's new, so you can actually go in and just like we have uh, the screens at the museum where you can uh, kind of touch and make oh, them move you? around. Explain yeah. what that means. These are huge screens uh, yes. in the outdoor pavilion kind of thing. So we have these large screens in the pavilion in front of uh, the museum and you can actually access history this way. So if there's a photo you like, if there's an image that you like, you can click on that image and it will take you to the information about that image. So now not only can you do that in person there, but you can also do it on Online. your phone and yeah. on your laptop. And that's uh, that's new. And that just relaunched this December. So you're talking about 30 feet or so of, of screens. Yes, of screens. And they're about four or five feet high. About four feet high. Four feet high. Yeah. And, and you can reach up and touch something and it, it does something. Yeah. You, you touch an image. You're like, oh, look at that beautiful building. I'm going to click on that. So you touch that, that building and what you get is like a little bubble and it shares all the information about that building. And it also shares the source, like where we got that image from. So it's really important because we are historians. We are a historian. Uh, a history institution, so we do like to attach sources to everything we do. Well, two things more with it. Also, you can do postcards where you can actually take your picture at the you screen can, and do a take, postcard and send yes. it to friends via email. And then also now you can you can do personal entries to the digi. Or Absolutely. Is it so you so you sign up, you create an account, and once you create your account, you can upload and you send it to us. And as long as there's nothing like, you know. Um, Negative, obscene, whatever. Yeah. Obscene, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this is one of several digital walls in the, on the planet, but only one in the United States. Yeah. Yes, this is, uh, uh, from this group, this is one of uh, four from this group. And I think there's going to be five very soon. Like Cairo, Denmark, or whatever, some yes. various places. And it, this is one of the few things that actually worked out of the 2012 bond, uh, bond election. This is excellent. This was an excellent project for us, and it's ongoing, and it's an archive that's just there for posterity for us yeah. to, to use. It's Erica Marin, what's that? Give us the address and your phone number at the El Paso Museum of History. Okay, we're at five ten North Santa Fe, uh, seven nine nine zero one, right across the street from the ballpark, and uh, you can park anywhere. There's a meter, and also too, you can call us at two one two three one six zero. And we will gladly answer any. Well, you can actually ride the trolley too, because the trolley will drop you off right and in front of the museum. It will drop and you, you appreciate off right visitors. Front. Come on down. We love visitors, and please feel free to donate as well at epmuseumofhistory.org. You can go to our uh, support and then donate, and through there you can donate directly to our museum foundation. That's a good thing to do. Well, it's an interesting story of the El Paso Museum of History. You brought some new things today about the history of South El Paso, which uh, I, I guess you're going to highlight some of these things that you already have. Absolutely. In there. Erica Marin, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Melissa, next time. We'll next see you. week. And we'll see you again. We'll back. Everybody else, we're going to Pepe's. Andrew J. Polk, thank you for doing what you do, yes, 4 to 6 so p.m. Much. 
Uh, that's every weekday, Monday through Friday. And thank you for being here on Saturdays. Appreciate Talk El Paso. Y'all take care. See you next week. See you next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to the El Paso History Show. We hope you'll join us again next Saturday morning, 10 to noon, and be sure to tell a friend about us. Sponsored by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. By Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, home of the one and only Margarita. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino, with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. Thank you for joining us from the studios of News Radio 690 KTSM AM, El Paso. iHeartRadio Earth is here with little tips for a healthier planet. It sure feels good to step into a warm car after letting it heat up for a few minutes. However, this practice wastes gas, increases emissions, and pollutes the air. Limit idling your car to no more than 